Welcome back to another teardown. Uh, probably a very short one. A few weeks ago, I teared down that USB-C uh, that should support Alt-DP mode to HDMI converter and the innards were astoundingly complex. Cut here, link in the description. Today I have here two security USB sticks and their innards should be really simple. So I guess a few passives and a single chip, but we'll see. Enjoy. So the first one is a SafeNet IK4000 and the other one is, uh, it's a bit hard to read, but it's a hard lock. And yeah, that's it for the hard lock and the safe key. Yeah, that's it for the safe key. Uh, so let's crack them open. Let's go destructive right away and try to... Huh? Woo. They don't botch. Not a bit. Okay, so <laughs> at least the casing is very secure. Uh -uh. Okay, this seems to be <clears throat> a job for another tool. Let's try this one. Okay, that went easy. Nope. They're sturdy. Okay. Time to use another tool. Oh, okay, number one. By the way, it says made in China. <laughs> of course it is. Okay, that's better and also quite disappointing. Once again, my expectations have not been met. So this is obviously the hard lock on R2 revision A. And only on that side we have a USB fuse. That's nice. Then an X1, that's that thing. Let me zoom down a little bit. That's a six megahertz quartz. <clears throat> That spells complexity for the other side. And then with a plus here and a C1 marker here, we have a E100. Uh, so that's a polarized, probably a tantalum capacitor. And 10 is uh, 10 picofarads times 10 to the power of 5. And that's ooh, 1 microfarad, if I'm right. So <clears throat> a full one microfarad capacitor here on the five volt supply. And that thing on the side, is that readable? Yeah, that's readable. We can zoom down a little bit more. That's an ST95020WP. Ah, uh, <laughs> that's a two kilobit SPI EEPROM. Uh, very nice, but uh, not exactly something I want to see in a security device. An EEPROM I can desolder and read out. Though I don't know what they are using that for. Uh, we have uh, two resistors here, mm, usage unknown. Uh, one is probably for the, yeah, what's left of the LED. I broke it a little bit. Mm -hmm. Let's have a look at the other side. On the back side, we find, yeah, uh, again, that uh, LED I broke. Then, interestingly, a uh, transistor, I guess, MOSFET or bipolar to switch that LED. 
another little decoupling capacitor and another little LE uh, diode. And then we have this monstrosity here. This is unbelievable. Okay, uh, that's a Cypress nowadays in Finian CY7C63413C-PVXC. Uh -uh. That's a low speed, high input output, 1.5 megabits per second USB controller. Featuring 265 bytes of RAM, 8 kilobytes of EEPROM, so uh, yeah, only programmable ones, 24 GPIO ports delivering 7 milliamps plus 8 GPIO ports delivering 12 milliamps. Why do they need a Trinity here to switch the LED, I wonder? Hmm. Uh, Eight additional I.O. pins that go to a digital to analog converter. Why? A 12-bit timer, a watchdog and a power on reset circuit. And everything is governed by a 8-bit RISC <laughs> microcontroller running at 12 megahertz. So double the frequency of the quartz or the oscillator we saw on the other side. Uh, I don't like it. I don't like it at all. You see, if they had stored the um, cryptographic secret of that security USB key here inside the EEPROM, that would be kind of okay. Uh, and they could have done that. But why? Why, oh why, do we have here an SPI EEPROM on the other side? And a small one at that. I suspect, I highly suspect, the EEPROM here really only holds the program logic. And they store the secure key or whatever is used in their system here in that external EEPROM, which is, yeah, <clears throat> I already mentioned it. You can simply desolder it and read it out. And uh, yeah, okay. So you still need the program running on that thing. Um, uh, yeah, uh, I won't give it a passing grade. Nah. nah. I think the SafeNet USB security key here is much better. Uh, yeah, it's all blobbed here. So these are naked chips. We do have an LED and the other side is also completely blobbed. So let me try some solvents or other stuff to get that uh, <clears throat> away. Okay, solvents uh, and stuff I have here at hand does do nothing to that blob, so I got the <clears throat> big guns out. Oh, wish me luck. Uh, 
Okay, that was rather tedious and I didn't film everything. At the end I just went on with some sandpaper until I saw the structures. Anyway, let's zoom down. And you can see on this side we just have some passives, that is uh, capacitors and resistors. Then we have that thingy here, mm, three pins maybe, a little tranny for driving the LED. And uh, one, two, three, four, five, eventually six pin jobby, which could be be an I squared C E E prom or flash, but uh, I don't think so. Uh, let's have a look at the other side. And there you see almost nothing. Just here in the middle, you even see the little dots where the contacts were, the contact wires that chip here, a single chip, and everything was blobbed. So yeah, I guess the SafeNet security USB stick is much harder to crack than the hardlock one. Everything's potted here, there's a single chip doing everything, and we don't know what type that is, and it's hard to access. Uh, below the potting. On the other side, we only have passives. Well, maybe that five, six pin jobby here was indeed an I squared C memory chip of some kind, but I don't know. Either way, it's also very hard to access, but it should be possible for <clears throat> people with the right equipment. While the <laughs> hard lock uh, uses a standard USB controller with a RISC microcontroller unit. And on the other side, uh, besides the passives, it has an easily accessible SPIEE PROM. Yeah, you can take your soldering iron, uh, put that out, put that on a breakout board and take your Arduino and read it out. Uh, no problem at all. Though I'm not really 100% that this contains any cryptographic secrets of that key, but yeah. Uh, if you are in need for a security USB stick solution, uh, my recommendation, go with the safe net and uh, skip the hard lock. That's it for today. I have to admit, I'm a little surprised that this teardown turned out more interesting than I expected. And of course, I was wrong uh, with my assumption that this would both be single chip solution. I mean, the SafeNet comes very close to a single chip solution, but yeah. Maybe some memory chip or something else here. Maybe it's just a voltage controller. Who knows? Anyway, till next time. Bye.